Here's an R56 with the chain rattle that everyone's so familiar with. That's the Cooper S. And uh, you'll hear it mostly when you first fire the car up in the morning, it'll go away. Uh, it does it worse on cold mornings when there's uh, very little pressure going on. So we're gonna listen to this and you can hear the rattle right from the front of the timing cover right here. taken apart already so we're going to take a look at the engine I'm going to show you how the timing tool kit is set up on the cams we've already removed the chain and the sprocket assembly and I'm going to show you what's going to happen on the assembly on the table here's your intake cam right here here's your exhaust cam over here we've got the cam lock tool that actually locks those cams in position so they stay in the right position and what's interesting with this motor is the entire chain, chain tensioner and um, chain rail assembly comes out the top. The tensioner comes out the back, back here. It allows to release the actual rub rails. There are two rub rails. There's one on the top. There's two sprockets here. We're going to go over to the table and I'll show you that layout. Here we are at the table and here's the layout of the original chain rail assembly. Here's your intake cam, exhaust cam, chain, and here's how it works. On the back side of the engine, here's your tensioner, okay? The tensioner applies pressure to this rub rail only here. It essentially takes up any slack of this chain as the chain starts to wear. The way Mini has figured it out here is they've got a, a tensioner rail here, they've got a guide rail over here, and they've got a support rail at the top. Now what we found on this car, you can see is the support rail broke, chain was flopping around. So what we're going to do here is replace the chain assembly. Here's all the new components we're going to exchange. This is, this is the bulletin of this repair job. You've got your rub rail and tensioner rail assembly. You've got the upper guide rail assembly. You're going to get a new timing chain. We're going to put in a new tensioner and we're going to put in a new crank sprocket. Now this is kind of an interesting way to change this assembly. Typically you would have to take the front timing cover off the vehicle. Now what many has done is pretty clever is the front crank hub comes out of the sprocket which means the crankshaft is actually another half inch down in there and it slides the front hub slides off of here once you remove the bolt and then what you're going to do is this entire cassette or this entire module slips because now the crankshaft is loose we've removed this thing from the crankshaft and we can once we've removed the tensioner we can slide that entire module right out of the top of the cylinder head as you saw on the motor over there now the reason we want to replace chain also is the tensioner actually only has so much reach and then it starts to actually extend too far into the crankcase area here and the tensioner won't apply proper pressure so what we have to do is make sure that we also replace the chain at the same time now when we take this entire assembly or the new assembly over there and we slip that down into the engine you notice these little tabs down here these little tabs are locking down on the sprocket with the chain in position it's all designed to interlock to where that piece will go down into the engine block without having any issues. Then you're going to look through the front timing cover, the actual hole that that um, hub fits into, and you're going to look in there, make sure you're aligned. You're going to then align the hub back to the crankshaft. You'll have to uh, keep in mind that you have set the timing already. You've already put the crank in the right position with its guide pin, and you've also put the cams in the right position. So what we're going to essentially do is slip this whole unit back inside. You put the hub down onto the sprocket. It will sandwich the sprocket to the crankshaft. You make sure you torque this to its specifications and it will hold that sprocket just by sheer force, just by compression. You make sure your cam gears are in correctly. You're going to reassemble and then at the end you're going to put your tensioner in and essentially what you're going to do then is that tensioner will apply pressure to the chain. Lastly, you'll put up that guide rail at the top and the thing will be ready to start the car. 
Now this isn't in, this is not the instructions on how to do the job. This is an actual overview of what occurs when this crankshaft or when this uh, chain assembly starts to fail. Sometimes it's only the plastic piece. We found both plastic pieces down inside this chain area right here. Luckily, they did not go to the bottom and get stuck in the lower sprocket. There could have been some additional damage there. We found the pieces just laying in the bottom. The car was still running. It just had a rattle, a severe rattle, at uh, idle when it was cold. It went away a little bit when you, when you revved the motor. We took the timing cover off. We saw the missing pieces. We knew we had to move forward on replacing this unit.